Hey everyone, imagine this. Millions of years ago our ancient ancestors decided to step down from the trees, began walking upright, and gradually evolved into who we are today. It didn't just happen overnight though, it was influenced by a whole bunch of factors, things like changes in the climate, what they ate, and how they survived. As time went on, they picked up new skills and tools to adapt to these challenges, relying on cooperation and migration to improve their chances of survival. Now, figuring out how all this happened isn't easy. It's taken years of research by archaeologists, anthropologists, geneticists, historians and others to piece together the story of our evolution. They've had to work with very limited evidence, just a few bones and ancient tools, but they've managed to paint an incredible picture of our distant past. Of course with so many gaps in the fossil record, there's been a lot of educated guessing and some theories that had to be thrown out when new discoveries were made. And honestly, there are still things we may never know for sure. So, let's dive into the idea of human evolution. I'm sure you've all heard of evolution, right? Think about how our technology has evolved over time. Take the smartphone as an example. The first smartphones didn't just appear out of nowhere. They were built on decades of technological advancements. First, we had the telegraph in the 1800s, proving electricity could be used for long-distance communication. That led to the telephone, then wireless phones in the 1980s, and eventually, after lots of tweaks and improvements, we got smartphones. Now, humans aren't exactly like smartphones, but there are some similarities in how both have evolved. Just like we can trace smartphones back to the telegraph, we can trace ourselves back to a distant ancestor called Australopithecus, who lived in Africa millions of years ago. You might have heard of Lucy, a famous Australopithecus fossil found in East Africa. She could walk upright and probably use tools, but beyond that, she was pretty different from us. She had a lot more hair, was better suited for climbing trees, and had a much smaller brain. Over time though, the genus Homo, meaning, human, evolved from Australopithecus. One of the earliest members of the Homo genus was Homo habilis, appearing around 2 to 3 million years ago. This species had some human-like traits, like bigger brains and smaller teeth, but they still had some ape-like features like long arms and short stature. Then, about 2 million years ago, Homo erectus came onto the scene, and things started to look a lot more familiar. Homo erectus was fully upright, had hands that were better suited for using tools, and had a diet that included easier to digest foods like nuts, fruit, and even meat. Homo erectus shared a lot of traits with modern humans. They were about the same height as us, sometimes even over six feet tall, and they knew how to make fire, build shelters, and use more advanced tools. They probably even had some ability to communicate vocally, which helped them work together to hunt and survive. Evidence shows that they cared for their sick and elderly, a sign of cooperation and compassion that's pretty similar to how we look out for one another today. About 1.8 million years ago, Homo erectus began migrating out of Africa, spreading into places like Europe and Asia. The exact reasons for their migration aren't entirely clear, but it might have been due to climate changes or following the animals they hunted. Along the way, different groups adapted to their new environments, which led to the evolution of various human species, like the Neanderthals and Denisovan. And while some of these species eventually died out, Homo sapiens, us, survived and continued to spread across the globe. So, how did all these species interact? Well, that's still a mystery. DNA evidence suggests there was some interbreeding between species. For example, modern Europeans and people from the Middle East have a small percentage of Neanderthal DNA. It's fascinating to think that some species, like the Neanderthals and Denisovan, actually evolved from a shared ancestor, Homo heidelbergensis, before eventually disappearing. Finally, around 40,000 to 15,000 years ago, only Homo sapiens were left. Two major theories try to explain this. One, called the Out of Africa Theory, 
suggests that modern humans first evolved in Africa about 200,000 years ago and then spread out, replacing other species. The second theory, called the multi-regional evolution model, proposes that Homo sapiens evolved in different parts of the world around the same time. The truth might be a mix of both ideas. Modern humans may have evolved in Africa but then mixed with other species as they spread out. So, why did early humans start moving, and where exactly did they go? Well, archaeological evidence suggests that Homo sapiens began their journey out of eastern and southern Africa as far back as 200,000 years ago. From there, they spread out in various directions, heading south, west, and north, eventually reaching areas as far as the Mediterranean. Then, around 100,000 years ago, Groups of Homo sapiens left Africa and started a global migration that would last thousands of years. Imagine crossing the Sinai Peninsula into Southwest Asia and then following the coasts of Asia. By about 70,000 years ago, they had made it to India and China. Some kept moving south, all the way to Indonesia, and eventually even Papua New Guinea and Australia, where we found evidence of settlements that date back 45,000 years. Other groups took different routes, some moved into Europe through the Mediterranean coast or crossed Turkey into the Danube Valley. By about 25,000 years ago, these early humans had even made it to Siberia. Roughly 15,000 years ago, some ventured from Asia into North America, making their way down to South America. They were covering some serious ground. But how do we know all this? The timeline of human migration has been pieced together through careful study of archaeological finds. However, there's still a lot we don't know. One thing that makes this era particularly fascinating is that during the last ice age, parts of the earth that are now covered by water were actually dry land. This includes parts of Southeast Asia and even the Bering Strait, which humans could walk across from Asia into Alaska. Despite these migrations, they also reached places like Australia, which was never connected to Asia by land. This implies that early humans were making rafts or some kind of boats to cross the water. We haven't found any remains of these rafts, but we know they must have existed. There's also evidence of human settlements in South America dating back 14,000 years, which suggests they may have been using boats to travel along the coasts of the Americas too. One of the most interesting discoveries in this field is the Kennewick Man, an 8,000-year-old skeleton found in Washington State. The surprising thing? His anatomical features more closely resemble Southeast Asian populations than the traditional Native American groups we associate with that region. This just goes to show how complex and layered human migration was, and how much we still have to learn. So, what actually sparked this massive migration? While we can't be completely certain, there are some solid theories. One idea is that around the time humans started leaving Africa, the climate there was getting much drier. Less water meant fewer plants and animals to hunt, which likely pushed humans to explore new areas in search of food. Early humans were hunter-gatherers, so when resources became scarce in one place, they'd naturally move to find more abundant areas. But of course, this wasn't a quick process. Over thousands of years, small groups moved in all directions, responding to changes in the environment and resources. And as humans moved into new environments, they adapted. They learned how to gather new types of plants, hunt different animals like woolly mammoths, rhinos, and even giant sloths. Their arrival in these new environments also led to some major changes. For example, when humans arrived in Australia around 45,000 years ago, they encountered some pretty unusual animals, like massive reptiles, a lion that carried its young in a pouch, and giant wombats and kangaroos. Interestingly, these species started disappearing right around the time humans arrived, long before the climate changes that wiped out large animals in other parts of the world. So, it's likely that human hunting played a significant role in their extinction. Now, let's talk about early human technology. To figure out how they lived, archaeologists have to rely on the objects our ancestors left behind. Unfortunately, 
Things like wood, animal skins, and other natural materials haven't survived the test of time, but what has lasted are stone tools. The use of stone tools goes back as far as 3.3 million years, marking the beginning of what we call the Paleolithic Age. Some of the earliest stone tools, which date back about 2.6 million years, were made by Homo habilis. They'd smash rocks together to create sharp edges, resulting in what we call Odawan tools. They might look simple to us now, but these tools were a game changer. They were used for everything from cutting meat to scraping hides and even smashing bones to get to the marrow inside. Then, around 1.7 million years ago, humans started making a more advanced type of tool called a hand axe. These tools were thinner, sharper, and much better at cutting and chopping. Archaeologists call these Aculean tools, and they've been found all over Africa, the Middle East and India. The design was so effective that it stuck around for over a million years, until about 250,000 years ago. But as time went on, even more advanced tools started appearing. Around that time, humans in Europe, North Africa, and Asia began creating smaller, more specialized tools from stone flakes, which were perfect for cutting meat, scraping leather, and even making spearheads. This new tool-making tradition is called Mousterian. By about 45,000 years ago, humans were making a wide variety of specialized tools for different tasks. Fire was another major tool that early humans learned to control. It was used not just for warmth and cooking, but also to harden wooden spears, making them more effective for hunting. And let's not forget the most powerful tool of all, language. While we don't know exactly when humans began using complex language, we know that by at least 100,000 years ago, they were communicating with a sophisticated range of sounds. Language allowed them to coordinate tasks, work more efficiently in groups, and pass down knowledge to future generations. So, as humans moved and adapted, they developed new technologies, strategies, and ways to communicate.